Hey, so I'm going to talk about um, Six Diminished a little bit. There's tons of videos and stuff about this on YouTube, um, I'm, so I'm not going to go over the basics, but I recommend checking those out. Um, this is something that a lot of people know from Barry Harris. This book and DVD is a good place to start, but there's a bunch of free stuff these days on YouTube also. And um, another good resource is David Berkman's Jazz Harmony book published by Cher, has a chapter on this idea. So that's all good. I just want to, I want to get into, I've been studying this for a while and it was, it's been confusing for a while, but I think I've kind of figured some stuff out that's helpful to simplify and then talk about how to apply it. So just to kind of get at what I'm talking about. So um, really what this idea, what this concept is all about is how to hire, is how to harmonize melodies um, in interesting ways. So it's, if you, have an existing melody, what are you going to put underneath it? Right, so I'm going to take a simple diatonic melody, first few notes of the C major scale, and harmonize that. So using this sixth diminished idea, what we're doing is we're harmonizing, we're either putting a sixth chord or a diminished chord underneath each of those notes, depending on if it's a chord tone, if the, if the melody note is a chord tone of the sixth chord, or of the diminished chord. So in this case, this first note, so this is all going to be thinking in the key of C. Um, we're going to hang a sixth chord underneath that, major sixth chord, just dri dropping down from, from below the melody, like that. And then this note of the melody, we're going to hang a diminished chord, and then another sixth chord. So as simple as that, just one sixth chord, diminished, which is really like a five chord, you know, or this dominant function without that G on the, on the bass, but diminish and then back to the one. So the, if this were in the context of a tune, the harmony on a lead sheet or something like that might just say C major, but you can add these uh, little passing chords, basically alternating between tonic and dominant as a way to give just more emotion to the line. So instead of just saying over a C major, you know, you just get this little motion happening. So that's nice already, but what we're get into, what's cool with this with this idea of six diminished, and I think this is kind of what Barry Harris gets at, but you know, when he when he plays it sounds so amazing, but it's a little bit hard to for me anyway, it was a little bit hard to follow the way that he was describing it. But really what it's about is kind of displacing where these chords are. Um, using either displacing either the six chord or the diminished chord. So in other words, instead of just seeing this note of the melody and hanging the sixth chord underneath it, you can actually play the other chord, the diminished chord, and then move into the sixth chord. So instead of just playing this, you can play this diminished chord underneath and then move into it. Diminished and resolve. So this melody note is staying is already there. So it's kind of like a suspension. It gets resolved. And then go the other way around for the next note of the melody. So the next note being this. So we're thinking of this as a chord tone of the diminished. But instead of playing that, we're going to start by playing the sixth chord underneath it. So there's the diminished. The sixth chord would be this. And then move into the diminished. And then finally the reverse idea on the last note of the melody. So this would be a chord tone of the sixth chord, but we're going to, instead of just playing the sixth chord, we're going to play the diminished underneath it. All right, so. So you really get this nice kind of inner motion happening underneath this melody. So again, the melody is this. Taking it nice and slow. Um, under here, start with diminished. So we can call it D diminished or B diminished. Under here, major, six chord, up into the diminished. And here, diminished. 
finished up in at six o'clock. So that's gold. And then, you know, you can get really creative with just kind of moving the voices of each chord at different times. You don't have to all move in blocks. Um, and one other point I want to get at for this video is just the idea that of kind of not just moving in um, parallel motion following the melody, but thinking about contrary motion and different things that you can do. Basically, um, as long as you're going from, as long as you're thinking of those two types of chords, the sixth chord or the diminished, you kind of move around in cool ways. So instead of just going, you know, straight up parallel like that, I could do something like just a different, different bass notes. So like, hey, let's try this here. So that, that's just a different, you know, that's still parallel with it for bass note, but let's try something that's more contrary. So this would be like, and then a simple idea would be this, descending. So now we have contrary motion to the melody. Like that, back to another six chord, with A in the bass. Or you can do things like, um, here, Two different roots of the of the diminished and then resolve so another way to just get more inner motion happening so that, that can go on and on you know you don't you just explore that um, so this is all just really thinking about playing harmonizing melodies in a key so everything there was like thinking of that melody being in the key of C major, but with adding these kind of alternating uh, five chords with a flat nine, technically, you know, think of it that way, or you think of it as diminished chords. Either way, it's a chord with dominant function, going back and forth in the chord with tonic function. Um, and so that doesn't, one other point that like, I think I w was confusing to me for a while in terms of how to apply this on a jazz tune or something like that, mm -hmm is it's really about thinking of the key that that melody's in so it doesn't matter really what the what the chords are of the tune you know the chord progression of the tune so if it, for example if it's like a two five one or something like that that whole two five one is suggesting a key so it's, if it's like a two five one in c major for example then you would just apply this by using by harmonizing in just the way that i was doing uh in the key of c basically alternating between c6 and we could call it B diminished or G7 flat nine, either way. Just thinking of the big picture key, and then if the tune modulates to a different key, then you know you have a different set of, of uh, six chords and diminished chords just related to a different key. So if the chord is like two, five, one, or three, six, two, five, or any kind of diatonic-ish progression, you just think about harmonizing the key, really kind of ignoring the, you know, the play this scale, play like Dorian and over D minor and that kind of thing. It's just thinking about we're in C major, we're harmonizing the melody using either a 1-6 chord or the diminished or kind of moving in these cool suspensions and delaying the resolutions and all that stuff. So I'll probably come back and talk, talk more about it later, but that is a world to dig into. It's super cool. And uh, if you, if anybody thinks I don't, uh, wants to add anything to that do so why don't you um, and uh, we can keep the conversation going all right thanks for watching